good day friends it is friday the 25th of february today is a day of well normally i say i love fridays because it's my day off but my day off has changed you know one thing we've learned in, during this time of pandemic is to adapt we've been very adapting through this whole time and i adore our staff for being so flexible and also a wonderful session a group of elders who flexed and changed we all have with the times that's what it takes and sometimes it is work so that's what we're talking about today the art chapter is on work and uh, in this study of discipleship I'm walking the line of discipleship work is part of it and we are looking at the 127th Psalm of Ascent. If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watch watchman might as well nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your worried fingers to the bone. Don't you know God enjoys giving rest to those God loves? Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb, God's generous legacy? Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are you parents with your quivers full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off your doorstep. And from Jacques Ellul. The first great fact which emerges from our civilization is that today everything has become means. There is no longer an end. We do not know whither we are going. We have forgotten our collective ends and we possess great means. We set huge machines in motion in order to arrive nowhere. The greatest work project of the ancient world is a story of disaster. The unexcelled organization and enormous energy that were concentrated in building the Tower of Babel resulted in such a shattered community and garbled communication that civilization is still trying to recover. Effort, even if the effort is religious, perhaps especially when the effort is religious, does not in itself justify anything. One of the tasks of Christian discipleship is to relearn, quote, the works you did at first, unquote, from Revelation 2.5, and absolutely refuse to work like the devil. Work is a major component in most lives. It is unavoidable. It can be either good or bad, an area where our sin is magnified or where our faith matures. For it is the nature of sin to take good things and twist them ever so slightly so that they miss the target to which they were aimed, the target of God. One requirement of discipleship is to learn the ways sin skews our nature and submit what we learn to the continuing will of God so that we are reshaped through the days of our obedience. Psalm 127 shows both the right way and the wrong way to work. It posts a warning and provides an example to guide Christians in work that is done to the glory of God. Babel or Buddhist? Psalm 127 first posts a warning about work. If God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchman might as well take a nap. It's useless to rise early and go to bed late and work your tired fingers to the bone. Don't you know God enjoys giving rest to those God loves? Some people have read these verses and paraphrased them to read like this. You don't have to work hard to be a Christian. You don't have to put yourself out at all. Go to sleep. God is doing everything that needs to be done. St. Paul had to deal with some of these people at the Church of Thessalonica. Thessalonica. That's a mouthful. They were saying that since God had done everything in Christ, there was nothing more for them to do. If all effort ends up in godless confusion, as it did with the people at Babel, 
or in hypocritical self-righteousness, as had happened among the Pharisees, the obvious Christian solution is to quit work and wait for the Lord to come. With a magnificent Redeemer like our Lord Jesus Christ and a majestic God like our Father in Heaven, what is there left to do? And so they sat around doing nothing. Meaning, mean, meanwhile, sorry, they lived by faith off their less spiritual friends. Unfriendly critics might have called them freeloaders. Paul became angry and told them to get to work. Quote, we're getting reports that you are a bunch of lazy good-for-nothings and are taking advantage. I'm sorry. We, we're getting reports that a bunch of lazy good-for-nothings are taking advantage of you. This must not be tolerated. We command them to get to work immediately. No excuses, no arguments, and earn their own keep. Friends don't slack off in doing their duty. 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 1, 11 through 13. How did they dare to reinterpret the gospel into a rationalization for sloth when he, Paul, for whom they had learned the gospel, worked his fingers to the bone up half the night, moonlighting so you wouldn't have the burden of supporting us while we proclaim God's message? 1 Thessalonians 2.19 The Christian has to find a better way to void the sin of Babel than by imitating the lilies of the field, which nearly neither toil nor spin. The pretentious work which became Babel and its pious opposite which developed at Thessalonica, Thessalonica, I can't say that word today, are displayed today on the broad canvases of Western and Eastern cultures, respectively. Western culture takes up where Babel left off and deifies human effort as such. The machine is the symbol of this way of life which attempts to control and manage. Technology promises to give us control over the earth and over other people, but the promise is not fulfilled. Lethal automobiles, ugly buildings, and ponderous bureaucracies ravage the earth and empty lives of meaning. Structures become more important than the people who live in them. Machines become more important than the people who use them. We care more for our possessions with which we hope to make our way in the world than with our thoughts and dreams which tell us who we are in the world. Eastern culture, on the other hand, is a variation on the Thessalonian view. It manifests a deep-rooted pessimism regarding human effort. Since all work is tainted with selfishness and pride, the solution is to withdraw from all activity into pure being. The symbol of such an attitude is the Buddha, an enormous fat person sitting cross-legged looking down at his navel, motionless, inert, and quiet. All trouble comes from doing too much, therefore do nothing. Step out of the rat race. The world of motion is evil, so quit doing anything. Say as little as possible. Do as little as possible. Finally, at the point of perfection, you will say nothing and do nothing. The goal is to draw absolutely and finally from action, from thought. From passion. The two cultures are in collision today, and many think that we must choose between them, but there is another option. Psalm 127 shows a way to work that is neither sheer activity nor pure passivity. It doesn't glorify work as such, and it doesn't condemn work as such. It doesn't say God has a great work for you to do, go and do it, nor does it say God has done everything, go fishing. If we want simple solutions in regard to work, we can become workaholics or dropouts. If we want to experience the fullness of work, we will do better to study Psalm 127. In the beginning, God worked. The premise of the Psalm for all work is that God works. Quote, if God doesn't build the house, if God doesn't guard the city, unquote, the condition if, presupposes that God does work, God builds, God guards. The main difference between Christians and others is that we take God seriously and they do not. We really do believe that God is the central reality of all existence. We really do pay attention to what God is and what God does. We really do order our lives in response to that reality and not to some other. Paying attention to God 
involves a realization that God works. The Bible begins with the announcement, in the beginning God created, not sat majestic in the heavens, not was filled with beauty and love. God created, God did something, God made something, God fashioned heaven and earth. The week of creation was a week of work. The days are described not by their weather conditions and not by their horoscope readings. Genesis 1 is a journal of work. We live in a universe and in a history where God is working. Before anything else, work is an activity of God. Before we go to the sociologist for a description of work or to the psychologist for insight into work or to the economists for an analysis of work, we must comprehend the biblical record. God works. The work of God is defined and described in the pages of Scripture. We have models of creation, acts of redemption, examples of help and compassion, paradigms of comfort and salvation. One of the reasons that Christians read Scripture repeatedly and carefully is to find out just how God works in Jesus Christ so that we can work in the name of Jesus Christ. And so tomorrow I will finish this fine chapter on work. God's work is at the center. God and everything else in our lives. That's work, that's family, that's ministry, that's whatever. God is at the center. I think that's a very important distinction. Sometimes we don't live like that, do we? And there are all kinds of, of uh, pressures and temptations in our culture to make something else at the center of our lives. You name it. You name it. You probably have tried it or, you know, found out that it didn't work very well or whatever. Whatever was at the center of your life that wasn't God. Anyway, we can be very grateful today to have the work that we do, especially when we keep God at the center and make everything in our lives peripheral to the will of God. It's a good thing. It's good to consult God with everything in your life. So in that vein, let's pray the prayer that has been taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you find a way today to work with God at the center of your lives, which means not working to the bone, nor doing nothing. It's a happy both and balance with God in the middle. Have a blessed day.